Okay, so tonight I would like to speak about the happy accidents, uh, what I mean by that. When I speak about happy accidents, I mean when you are creating it in music as in art, it happens that there is an accident. You screw something up, uh, you do something wrongly, not as you wanted. And very often when we do some art or some music, we think it's crude, I should give up, or the song or the painting is completely ruined, you know. I'm going to make a parallel between a situation that I found uh, in this book, the Phil Brown a book written about several artists, but of course I'm talking about Tok Tok and uh, a parallel with something which happened to me years ago and, and still now actually, so I will explain to you. In the book written by Phil Brown, if you go to the page, the page 285, at the end of the page you will see it's written. On one occasion, Tim had just finished playing a guitar part. Before we stopped recording, he put the guitar on its stand to come into the control room for a playback. As he took his first step, he caught the lead with his foot and the guitar, which was still plugged in and crashed to the floor, giving off a grand explosion sound. After the playback, we erased the guitar part but kept the accidental explosion at the end, moving it to a more desired location in the song. So for example, so that is an example, uh, Tim Freeze Green uh, played a part of guitar and then the guitar fell and you know it's electrical so when, when it fell it, it made probably a huge noise and they didn't keep the guitar, they kept the noise. That is very typical of situations which happen in music, but not only in art too. So another thing, if you go to the page 299, so that is for laughing stock. Also, as nothing was planned and we were playing by the rules of chance, accident and coincidence, we needed to try out almost every idea and combination of sounds before we knew we had the right part of texture. So that is when he's speaking about the texture he, they were trying to put in the music. Anyway, why I was reading that? It is to show you that when you do a mistake or an accident in your art, you don't have to think, uh, I screwed up, I'm, I, I suck, I, I won't be able to do it. On contrary, I would say that most of the time the accidents are the most interesting part in the creation. So, for example, years ago I was exhibiting in Paris. It was not an art exhibition, it was art and craft. And I was exhibiting there mostly objects, uh, painted objects uh, with collage or things like that, mosaic, uh, paper mache and things like that. And I, I used to, to exhibit with a, a friend of mine, she was actually doing jewelry. Nothing to do with me. I don't know how to do jewelry and she does. And she wanted to try to do some collage on objects she wanted to make like me. And she, she brought, um, I don't remember if it was a box or a, a bowl, something where she made some collage on it. And uh, she told me that she spent like one week on that object because she wanted to do it perfectly and that she was trying not to make a mistake because my objects were perfect so she had to do something perfect too. And I remember then I told her but why are you sweating like crazy to do something like that? You have no idea how many mistakes I make while I'm doing these things. And it's very often it's the screw up which 
becomes interesting and we think that it was perfect from the very beginning and it was not and actually it's becoming more interesting when we when accidents happen we can say that we had accidents because an accident must be an accident if you start uh, purposely screwing up it's not an accident anymore it's just working badly but accidents happen you know you can you, we are not perfect nobody is perfect so you may screw up it's more it's not the screw up which matters it's what you are going to do with the screw up which matters actually so i told her you see this 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 and this i screwed up on all of them i'm not perfect i'm human and uh, i make mistakes and sometimes i correct the mistake sometimes i keep it because the mistake is more interesting than what i was doing and she, and she wouldn't believe me and she was thinking that i was saying that because i don't know i didn't want her to do it perfectly but she gave up be she gave up because she thought that she would never manage to do something perfectly and she was right because we can't do things perfectly we are not machines we are not robots we are human and one of the main characteristic of the human is that humans are not perfect i had a lot of screw up on my paintings on my objects on I remember the one of my not my first object but maybe my third or fourth object I made a box and it was a present for someone so I painted a box and uh, it was with stencils and um, I was spraying some paint and then doing some stencils and uh, I was not very comfortable with stencils then uh, of course, now it's quite different because I master the <laughs> stencils really well. But even when you master, sometimes you still screw up, you know. Uh, anyway, I put too much paint and the paint went under the stencil and it was completely ruined. It was not perfect. And actually, I came back to correct the thing because there was no question to giving up. It was a present. It had to be done. And I couldn't take another box because I only had that one. And by correcting and improving my mistake, actually it became more beautiful than all what I did before. That was the first time when I learned that mistakes can be actually more interesting than uh, when you do the thing perfectly so i'm not saying that you must be really bad at your work and that you must do it really badly and be happy with that no you must do your best you must work at the best as possible but if an accident happens don't panic see if it's not interesting, if it's not interesting, you correct it. If it's interesting, you keep it. And you don't blame yourself because you are not perfect. Nobody is. I'm absolutely certain that many artists, even the most famous ones, uh, screwed up in art. I'm going to give you an example on the painting that I'm doing right now, that I have not finished yet and... Uh, that is a shame on me well tax period sorry <laughs> honestly i would prefer being painting rather than doing the taxes but well anyway i'm going to show you a detail and you will understand better first of all the background of the stairs here the last time I showed you how I was painting, I did the, not the right color and I had to come back and change the color. So I didn't give up because I made a mistake on the color. I just corrected it because it was not good. But here, so you see there is um, a light. A light is supposed to come here. Uh, it's on the photo with a Brian Ferry. I didn't finish him yet. 
And while I was doing the background, I don't know why I did this. I forgot that that was the light. And I thought, okay, I'm going to let it dry and I will put back some white or yellow color. I don't know exactly how I'm going to do the light yet. But as you can see, actually, we have the feeling that the dancer has her shadow in the light. And I didn't do that purposely. That was an accident. And I decided to keep it because it's incredible. If I would have uh, wanted to do it purposely, I wouldn't have managed to do it. But the mistake is better than the reality. So that is an example of a mistake, an accident I'm going to keep. And that is an example of a mistake that I made and that I had to correct because it was not right. So I think that now you understand maybe a little better why I absolutely love the way that Marco Lee, Tim Freeze Green and the others in Talk Talk, but it's mostly, uh, it's mostly Marco Lee and Tim Freeze Green, why I love so much their way of working because it has something natural. They don't try to do the thing perfect. They, they put kind of a human dimension in what they are doing. Um, sometimes, for example, I'm filming during my artwork and filming the musicians and uh, suddenly firemen are passing just in front of us and we hear the sound of the firemen in the music. Of course, when I'm filming, I don't especially want firemen to pass and to make noise while I'm filming. But sometimes the noise of the firemen is even better than the sound, I'm, the sound I have while I'm filming. And it's like a happy accident and I'm glad that it happened. That is why I like so much the spontaneity aspect, the natural aspect, the form of sincerity, a form of... It's like saying, yes, we are the artist, yes, we are making the art, but we are not deciding everything. The randomness, the um, things which happened outside of us, or even if we made the mistake, we didn't do that purposely, so it's not, it's like, a, it's kind of a chance, you know, uh, it's, it enters in the creation. It's not only us, it's also other things which happen. And that's what I like in creation. I think that is fascinating. I would have dreamt to have been in the studio while they were recording Spirit of Eden, Laughing Stock and the Marcolis uh, solo album because I think they are the ones where the recording sessions were probably the most interesting because of that. Uh, I read that uh, they were working in the dark, so if I had been there to, to film or to take pictures or to take notes or to draw them, I don't know, to, to do something while they were recording, I think that I would have had difficulties to stay the whole day in the dark. I understand Phil Brown when he says that because I, my eyes really need light. But beside that, it was probably fascinating, fascinating, not only because I love the music, but I, I, I'm always interested in the spirit put in the creation, but I'm also very interested in the technique. I know that the technique doesn't come first. The idea comes first, the spirit, what you want to put in it come first, but the technique is also interesting and sometimes you are technically great 
and finally it's not your greatness in technique which matters but more the randomness that is why some musicians on Spirit of Eden were not very happy because Marcolis kept only what these musicians considered as being failed parts. And it was exactly what Marcolis wanted and what was great according to the musicians it was not interesting for Marcolis and he didn't keep these parts. So the musicians I read that somewhere were a little upset, but I think that Marcolis were searching for something different and something which fitted with what he wanted in the spirit of what he wanted. And only the person who creates can decide that, of course. It's very difficult to recreate a mistake. In the book, uh, at a point, he's trying to do two chords again and again and again because he wanted to recreate something that he did when he was at his home. And it's, it's very difficult to redo something like that because, because when you do something great, usually you do it when it's the first time and when you try it again, it's never it's never as good. I'm going to stop this video. I think it's a rather short one, this one, but uh, I, I want to try to make more videos about music, about Marcolis and Tuk Tuk, of course, but I was considering also doing videos about other things which matter to me. I, I'm not sure yet. It depends on the time I will have considering my work, but I like doing videos, actually. I, I, I love editing, I love adding music, and uh, I think it's a very complete task because it's image, art, music, thoughts, and writing uh, in the description box, and it, so it, it gathers a lot of things that I like to do. Okay, um, so I hope that my video will be useful to you if you create and uh, will make you maybe a little less stressed and more relaxed, I would say. I'm always relaxed when I draw or when I paint. Of course, I want to manage to do what I want to do, but if you don't manage to do it, redo it <laughs> you know <laughs> there is not a fine if you don't do it <laughs> you know i see so many you know i've been giving um, lessons of art and craft during a very long time and i saw so many people uh, students who were so scared to just try something it's funny I had a woman, she was sure that she wouldn't manage to do it and she didn't want to do something and I told her, you won't leave the room without trying, <laughs> you know? <laughs> she tried and it was great. So when you create, be relaxed and enjoy your mistakes. But don't do mistakes purposely. Do your best, do your best. And if there is a mistake, Whatever. <laughs> okay. <laughs> bye bye and see you soon.